Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ria and welcome to my channel The Lady Dentist. We help you to master dentistry and progress a bit every day. Topic for today is Apexogenesis. Today's video is all about discussing in which tooth we can perform apexogenesis, why we perform apexogenesis and not RCT, indications, contraindications and procedure of apexogenesis. Along with that, I have attached a case of apexogenesis with 6 months and 12 months follow up. So let's clear your basics and make the subject more interesting. What is apexogenesis? It is defined as the treatment of a vital pulp by capping or pulpotomy in order to permit continued growth of the root and closure of the open apex. Again reading out the first line. It is defined as a treatment of a vital pulp means the tooth has to be vital which may be infected or inflamed. Basically, the tooth has to show signs of reversible pulpitis. Now the next part, in order to permit continued growth of the root and closure of the open apex. So why we perform apexogenesis? This treatment of vital pulp not only results in apical closure but also allows continuous growth of the root till apex. How this growth occurs? This growth occurs by sustaining Hartwig's epithelial root sheet that allows continuous development of the root length and favorable crown root ratio. In which tooth we perform apexogenesis? Apexogenesis is performed on a young permanent tooth with incompletely formed apices that has a vital pulp. During my final year, I always had this doubt why we cannot perform RCT in incompletely formed root. A simple sorted answer to this question would be an immature endodontically treated tooth has poor long term prognosis. Why? Because incompletely formed root has relatively thin dentin which on obturation increases the risk of fracture. Moreover, in tooth with wide apical foramen, pulp revascularization and repair occurs more readily. There is significant repair potential in pulp of immature tooth. What are the indications of this procedure? First indication, it is indicated for traumatized or pulpally involved vital permanent tooth when root apex is incompletely formed. Next is no history of spontaneous pain, no sensitivity on percussion, no hemorrhage and normal radiographic appearance. Moving on to contraindications. In cases where there is degenerative changes, purulent discharge, history of prolonged pain, necrotic debris in canal and periopical radiolucency, we should avoid this treatment. Let's begin with the procedure now. First give local anesthesia to the patient, then apply rubber dam. After that, remove all carious tooth structure and de-roof the pulp chamber. Now using a spoon excavator, remove the coronal part of the pulp tissue without damaging the radicular pulp. After that, remove all the residual debris with saline and control hemorrhage by placing a moist cotton pellet over the amputated pulp. Now place 2 mm thick layer of calcium hydroxide or MTA over the amputated pulp and give temporary restoration. The procedure is not over yet. To check for root closure and root development, recall the patient after 6 weeks and then after 6 months. Once the root development is complete radiographically, then do good conventional root canal treatment and give a final restoration. Here is a case presenting class 3 trauma where apexogenesis has been performed.
I hope you like the video and for any further queries comment down below and subscribe to my channel.